you know, two and two week. I, I thought we were just really one one pitch or really one hit away from being a three and one week. Uh, I thought we did some good things at Louisiana Tech. Um, we just lost. I actually thought we played better uh, in a loss to Tech on Wednesday than we did Sunday in a win. So sometimes you can play bad in our business and the game will allow you to win. Uh, that's that's dangerous. And sometimes you can play good in this business and the game doesn't allow you to win. But And then we focus on the loss and celebrate the win when yet we actually played worse in the win than we did in the loss. And so we, 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 we felt we did a lot of good things. We had nine outs to go with a five to one lead. Um, that, that's, that's a good thing. We started a freshman uh, with Louisiana Tech's, one of their biggest crowd ever, uh, to come in and see them play and see us play. So there's an honor and a privilege in that. <clears throat> they had an SEC team that came in earlier in the season and you know they had a bigger crowd for us. So, so there's an honor and a privilege that when you wear that bullseye on you uh, to start a freshman in that <clears throat> and then he loads the bases up and gets kind of punched in the face, but yet he doesn't get on his heels and he never let his fear overcome his faith. And I think that's so important, not only in our professional life that we're trying to teach these kids, but uh, also what we're also trying – to teach both these 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 men and these women is not to let their fear overcome their faith. And so when you see that happen, I was really proud of him um, that day because that's that's a learning thing that's not as easy to learn as a pitcher. Um, he stayed on the system um, and, and, and stayed with it, and then he gave us a chance to win. Uh, our bullpen gave up one run here and one run there and one run here, and we had some chances to win all the way throughout the ball game, just never got the big hit, but we actually played well. You know, with that kind of crowd on the road, with a freshman, um, with a team that's red hot, that was playing very well, um, you know, we should have finished them off. We played good enough to win, but we just didn't win. So we tried to stay focused on the good things that we did and came home. This team's been real good about being able to respond because, again, um, you've heard me say this, you can't pick and choose the games you win and lose, but you can pick and choose how you respond when you do win or lose. And so they've been able to do that and not get so focused uh, in, in a loss to where they can get caught in a tailspin. Uh, in this profession, what does you in is is is, is the loss that, that counteracts a lot of other stuff. And so uh, we were fortunate enough to come back, gunner through really well on Friday for us. We got that game in, game two, they took it to us. Uh, we let the game get away from us. But then again, they came back on Sunday. Um, we got caught in a tight game. Um, but we played, again, very good defense. Uh, we got very good pitching from Hogan and then very good pitching behind Guillory, and then we were able to put ourselves in a position to squeeze bunt uh, to win the game. So um, now we've got to move on. Uh, in this sport, you can't live in the past, good or bad. Um, you can't live in the past because you got so many games to worry about. So today they're off. Tomorrow we'll pick up Houston a very good team, and then we'll pick up Tulane on Wednesday, uh, which is going to tax our, our pitching staff for the first time. So guys are going to have to help out. Some guys that might not have thrown a lot are going to have to stand up and, and help out. And then we'll travel on Thursday and open uh, with Troy our first conference series on the road. So questions you might have. We're going to go TBA on that one and finish finish – tomorrow night, and then from there, look and see who's who we want to, to start for us. We'll probably throw a lot of arms anyway on Wednesday out of the bullpen maybe. It just depends on what what, what the bullpen, how, how much they get taxed on Tuesday. How big was it for me to keep it loose yesterday in a five-game? Well, you know, that's that's important, and we got through a, a weekend series and went two out of three and didn't even use our closer, so that was good. Uh, so. That was really big, especially when you got that Tuesday and Wednesday game, because you got to be really careful because you want you don't want to you want to be ready on Friday night to win a conference championship. Um, at the end of the day, you know you're trying to become a champion. On the other hand, with the RPI, um, you know you got to try to manage that too. So it was good. Uh, our, our pitching staff did a good job of not letting them get in our bullpen too heavy on Sunday. Well, it was good to do little things. You know, you have to win. I, I, I you know, we I, I should have did that at Louisiana Tech with, with Zach LaFleur. We had a chance right there that 
I probably should have double squeezed right there, and we didn't, and so we weren't going to wait around again. So we, we, it was good to see that inning set up um, and be able to get the double, and then from the double, bunt him up to squeeze. We were going to squeeze for sure. We just needed to get him the third. And um, so you got to learn how to win all kind of ways, and you got to learn how to win different ways with different hitters. Some hitters are struggling. Some are doing really good. They feel real good about themselves. And so a lot of times it's using your personnel according to how they're feeling. Um, I like always asking our players a question and then just kind of just looking and see how they answer it and seeing what they look like when they answer it. And he was on the on-deck circle, handsome was, and I just called him back to the dugout and said, look, this is we might have an opportunity to squeeze right here. Do you feel confident you'll be able to get it down? And he answered it, you know, not only the way I wanted verbally, which they usually all do that, but it's being able to look at them, how they answer that question. That tells you a lot. You know, when I'll ask a pitcher, how do you feel today? Usually the answer and how he looks can, can tell you a lot. And, and I felt real good. Handsome's a pretty good bunner. Most catchers usually are not bunners sometimes, but he is he is a good bunner. And the position, the, the situation presented itself for us to be able to do it, and he executed and got it done. So it was good. Because, you know, right now, until we can get more hitters together, uh, we're not scoring a lot of runs. So instead of crying about that, we have to counteract that. And the way to counteract that is we've got to pitch, we've got to play defense, and then we got to do the little things. And um, would I have liked to score more runs? Sure, we'd love more runs every game. But, you know, at the end of the day, that was a score, and we had to deal with it manage it. And um, what was really good is that we got rid of people nickel and diamond us after the fifth and the sixth inning when the starters have come out to get the demo. We've, we've, we've kind of, you know, tried to rush demo up sometimes. And, and if we can get uh, now Jevin and, and Wyatt now with Guillory moving up to that slot for us, that's big because they can start to take now that, that's that seventh, that eighth, and trim some work off of, of Dylan. Well, the big thing about him is that he has he has leadership capability. Um, some players on your team um, they can really be troublemakers because if they don't have the ability to lead, because nobody's going to follow them. Um, they're all alone. Those are the guys that don't scare me. The guys that scare me are the ones that have leadership ability. He has leadership ability. Um, so him and I have worked extensively a lot from last year to this year to really, really try to hone in on that um, because, you know, there have been some great leaders in our country, but they've led people down the wrong path. And those are the dangerous leaders. Um, and he's a guy that has the ability. He, he's kind of like a thermostat, you know, in a room. He can set the temperature in the locker room. Um, and, and he can make it funny. Um, he can make it serious. Um, he can do a lot of things. He has that ability. And, um, and we've worked real hard for him to understand that and make sure that he can um, use that in, in a good leadership role because leadership's tough, man. I mean, it's tough. Um, a lot of kids today um, crack to mob mentality. They're scared of the mob. They're scared of the mob in the locker room and they're scared of the mob in the outside world. And so they have a tendency to buckle and sit down when it's time to stand up. And uh, he's got the ability to stand up when it's time to stand up, but it's scary to fight the mob. You know, a manager is different from a leader. A manager just manages the direction somebody's going in. Okay. So that's an easy role to be a manager. The reason it's tough to be a leader is because he has to change the direction of where you're going and people don't like change. And some people don't have thick enough skin to lead because they're scared of the mob. They're scared to fight the mob. And the one thing about Penny is he's not scared. Um, but but he needs to channel a lot of what he has. You know, Jace Conrad had it. Mike Strength had it. Those guys have a lot of stallion in them, a lot of alpha male in them, um, which is really good. But it's got to be harnessed because it can consume them. Every at bat to Penny's Armageddon. I mean, every at bat's Armageddon to him. He never wastes an at bat. I mean, he 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 just doesn't. But he also can't let that consume him. Um, and 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 all those other players, I thought, you know, when Jace and Mike and those guys, they went from forty three wins to fifty eight wins. I don't think our ability got better to add fifteen more wins to us. 
I think their leadership ability got better. That's what led to more wins. <clears throat> and and so he's a, he's a guy that has leadership ability. He's a guy that the team will follow. Um, but with that um, leadership, you inherit a big responsibility as as coaches, as coaches of these 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 women and coaches of our players. We got our jersey on 24 hours a day because we have a lot of responsibility. That's what comes with leadership. Some people believe with leadership, you know, boy, he's so lucky. It's a drug. He gets to stand up here and talk or he gets people to come up to him and talk to him. Leadership's not a drug, man. It's a responsibility. And um, you, you have to understand that. Uh, but to get a 19, 18, 17, 18, 19-year-old kid to understand that and then to understand that when he takes his jersey off at night and walks out of here, he didn't take his jersey off. His jersey's still on him if you're going to be a leader. Um, and, and, and leadership's tough, man. It is tough to be a leader because you will have to fight the mob somewhere and you're going to have to change direction. You're not just going to be able to go with the flow. And Penny Hot has all that, but he but he also has, like I said, some stallion in him. Mike had some stallion in him. I mean, you know, you you hope that no trouble started in a bar one night because Mike will clean that whole bar out. Um, Penny Penny's got some throwdown in him, um, but but it, but you got to be careful. You can't let it consume you. Okay, um, he's got some flair with him too, you know, which is a good thing. But it's got to be channeled when Sinsley you know, flipped the bat the other night. The next ball was hit pretty hard. I thought Penny hit it out. And I, that's I mean, the first time in my life I was praying that the ball wouldn't go out of the ballpark because I didn't know how far up the backstop Penny would have flipped his bat in a home run. <laughs> um, God forbid. But, 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 but he, you know, again, he's got a lot of, he's, he's got a lot with him. And, and, and I think he's learning, he's mature and he's growing. He's really learning how to, you know, how to handle that. Jace was like that. You know, Jace, every at bat was Armageddon. But sometimes he never believed the pitcher got him out. And sometimes he would have a tendency to tell the pitcher that on the way back to the dugout. Um, and and we had to do some talking about that. And then he became a ventriloquist. He'd do it without me seeing him. And and we had to work on that. And, and because what they don't realize is they have a tendency when we flip that bat, which we talked about that too, but but they they started to take it personal and they came back and got after us on Saturday. Uh, I'm not saying they wouldn't have, but when you beat somebody, it's a lot better to let them go home and bring them back the next day and don't turn anything into personal. Let them try to make it personal amongst themselves. If they can do that, well, good. They're a good club because I think good clubs, like Coach said, I think they take things personal. We take things personal, but sometimes they don't take things personal. But when you do something like talk back to the pitcher, make a sign to the dugout or whatever, um, they can start to take things personal. Um, and, and, you know, I used to have to talk to my own son about that. He was pitching one time against Catholic or school, and, and they were all over him, calling him daddy's boy and a Twizzler and everything else. And so he struck the last guy out to finish the game, and he did kind of a cutthroat sign to him, which – my wife called me and said, you're not going to believe what he did. And I said, okay, well, have him ready. I'll talk to him when I get home because we, we, we have to do road discipline when your kids are playing and you're coaching other people's kids. But So I got home that night and I explained to him, look, I'm going to speak tomorrow to their high school. I know you don't know this. It's a fellowship of Christian athletes. I said, that's not a real good time. And I said, what do you want me to do? You want me to open up the speech with something like this? <laughs> so, so we had to talk about that and make sure we understand that you can't get caught up in the moment. Um, and you can't, I'm, I'm okay with playing with passion, like I tell the players, but it's got to be directed to us. It's got to be directed to our dugout. It's got to be directed to our fans. It can never be directed to an umpire or to a dugout or to an opposing pitcher because then you're going to, then you're going to wake somebody up. They're going to take something personal. And then now you've got a serious fight on your hands and then it becomes you against them. This is not about you against them. This, this is for us. Like I told Steven, you know, you hit that home run. You know, and I know you can get caught up in the moment, which he did, because I mean, that ball was hit pretty far. I mean, um, uh, I, I think the kid they went sent to go get it, they still haven't found him, but his picture's gonna be on the side of a milk cart, and they're still looking for him. But I, I know he hit it far, but it still doesn't give you the right to flip a bat over it. You know what I'm saying? And so now it becomes personal. Now, now you wake everybody up, and they hang a ten spot on us. You know. Um, 
those are the things I don't really like. But we 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 talk through all of that, and 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 and, and Penny's really I think really maturing and growing, and I think the more he does that, I, I think the better we're going to be too.